Coming up tonight on the Jeff and Dan Show. We're going to play Spot the Pot, Head. Top 10 most important things in life. We're also going to review the history of marijuana. And we're going to play the weed movie guessing game. All coming up tonight on the Jeff and Dan Show. Wednesday, it's 7 o'clock. It's time for the Jeff and Dad Show. <sighs> Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Jeff and Dan Show. I'm Dan. I'm your host of the Jeff and Dan Show, and tonight we're going to have a very special show. We are doing a two-part show, one part tonight and one part maybe next week on marijuana. That's everybody's favorite subject. Yeah. It is mine anyways. Yeah. Everybody... Please give a nice pothead warm weed welcome to our good friend and co-host, Jeff. Hello over there, sir. How are you tonight? Did you just say that? What did I just say? I don't know. (laughs) Did you forget to? I did. I did. But I'm having a good time about it, you know, so it's all good. (laughs) As long as I can laugh at myself. And that's what we are going to do. Maybe everybody else can laugh at me too, but you know... So tonight we're going to be talking about the marijuana. Marijuana. Marijuana in part mm-hmm. one of two. So we shall uh, discuss the green and uh, wear the green. And, uh, you know, uh, it'd be good. Have a fun time. We Welcome to the smoking of the green. Yes, sir. So what would you like to start with tonight first? Do you want to do the um, go over the uh, history of marijuana? Let's do that because it's a very important thing. I don't think people know exactly what happened throughout time. Yeah, I'm really stoked up about this. Yes, I am stoned up about this, too. (sighs) Okay, well, as far back as 2900 BC, a Chinese emperor, Fu Hisi, uh, a reference to marijuana as a popular medicine. So uh, basically it was, uh, you know, Chinese that started it again. You know, fireworks, powder, gunpowder, a lot of things we do in in the Western Hemisphere uh, yeah, we got from China, which is pretty wild. Um, oh, sorry, uh, I, I just got to get get something out of here. Oh, okay, no problem. Sorry. Uh, yeah. So um, the the Chinese word for cannabis is ma. 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 Yeah. So apparently it's that simple. Ma ma. Uh, yes, ma. Yeah, ma ma. I'm gonna go over to a fucking Chinese restaurant and be like, yeah, hey man, I want some of this and I want some of that. ma ma. Give me ma. Tuma. Give me Tuma. We're going to have fun. Ma. It's <laughs> not a Tuma. It's not a Tuma. <laughs> <laughs> Stop saying vagina. Uh, as close as 2700 BC, Chinese Emperor Shen Nung uh, said to discover the healing properties of marijuana. Oh. Now, this has been known since the 2700 BC era. And we're just now starting to put puzzle pieces back together again. The fucking Chinese yeah. are brilliant. Back together. Exactly. 1500 BC, the earliest written reference to medical marijuana was in Chinese pharmacopoeia. Uh, the use of cannabis for purposes of healing predates recorded history. Did it say what they used to heal it? Heal. What did they heal? Uh, yeah. With it. Um, they were seeing the healing properties. Um, just as regular as uh, everyday herbal herbal medicine, ginseng, ephedra, ephedra. Sorry, so. um, basically just to be able to heal common common uh, stuff. They didn't they didn't go into details as to what nausea. It was. Yeah, probably just yeah. that. A headaches. So I would it, think <laughs> that would be a great fucking way to get rid of headaches. It is. I, yeah, a lot of times it works. Not always. Yes, and but, and but a lot of times it does work. For me, it is the best. Uh, sleep aid. Sleep aid. In the world. I mean, the only problem that I have, though, is that I don't dream very much, at least not that I recall. Uh, but then again, I don't recall a lot of shit after I smoked marijuana. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah. Uh, 1415 BC, the book of Exodus references a holy anointing oil made from cannabis. Is that right? Yes. Oh, 
we could dig into that. Holy anointing oil, as described in the original Hebrew version of the recipe in Exodus 30, 22 to 23, contained over six pounds of Kenish bosom, a uh, substance identif identified by respected entomologists, linguists, anthropologists, botanists, and other researchers as cannabis. Extracted into about six quarts of olive oil, along with a variety of other fragrant herbs. Mm. The ancient anointed ones were literally drenched in this potent mixture. I would love to be drenched in that potent mixture. Thank you very much. <laughs> Shit, let's have a whole fucking bathtub. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Anybody got a lighter? <laughs> <laughs> I will sit in here like the Olympic fucking torch. <laughs> <laughs> I am on fire, but damn it, I am feeling good. <laughs> uh, Twelve thirteen BC, the Egyptians used cannabis for glaucoma, inflammation, and enemas. Now I could go for the first two. <laughs> uh, wait, I, wait, did you stick the whole plant up there? <laughs> <laughs> Stuff it in and turn. I guess it works. <laughs> it's like Roto Rooter. <laughs> okay, now light it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what it does, man. Let's see what it does. <laughs> anyway, they say uh, cannabis pollen is found in the mummy of Ramses II, who died in 1213 BC. Prescriptions for cannabis in ancient Egypt included treatments for the eyes, glaucoma, inflammation, and cooling the uterus. Cooling? Cooling the uterus. Cooling the uterus. Yeah, that's what it says. The uterus. Cooling the uterus, yeah. And then as well as administering enemas. I guess, I don't know what they mean by that. When they say that, are they saying that you got high and then fucking got an enema? I don't know. That's just really weird, but or, that's what I'm or saying. Or did they use the enema medicine from a uh, marijuana? That could be. And, could and be. I, I don't quite understand cooling. Yeah, I don't know what cooling the uterus means either. Maybe that's something you want to look up. It's it's uh, it out, man. Ninety-eight degrees. Um, I know. <laughs> it's doing pretty warm in there. It's doing it, pretty it, warm. It is pretty warm in there, but it's just as warm there as it is under your armpit. It's just like you know, I if I've told my wife before, hey man, I will uh, I've got something that'll cool that off. <laughs> <laughs> I got a cream you can put on that. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Very much so. <laughs> and then we had four kids. Uh, you know. Yeah. Okay. You got a cream to get rid of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's called driving off a cliff. Anyway. Just kidding. I, I wouldn't have it any other way for you, man. Yeah. That's cool. 1000 BC. Bang. B-H-A-N-G. Bang. <laughs> that's the name of it. A drink of cannabis and milk is used in India as an anesthetic. Hmm. Bang, a can. So the next time we go to fucking India, we got to be like, bang, bang. <laughs> bang, ma. I'm not exactly sure what you're trying to say, sir, but if you're trying to say a combination of cannabis and milk, sure, you could have some. Here you are. <laughs> uh, no, but it's a cannabis drink generally mixed with milk. It's used as an anesthetic and anti-phlegmatic. So in other words, it <laughs> doesn't happen anymore. <laughs> <laughs> New from Dairy Queen, it's the 420 shake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. You've heard of the blizzard. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Now we're not blizzarding anymore. Cannabis begins to be used in India to treat a wide variety of human maladies. Maladies. Uh, and that's a, that's a thousand yeah. human maladies. <laughs> you can't sing. Get him high. <laughs> Human melodies. Uh, no, so yeah, that's 1000 BC. So that's pretty good. 700 BC, the medical use of marijuana in the Middle East recorded in the Venedad, which is I'm, is one of the books that, I don't know, I guess it'll say here. Oh, Zathrusta. Yeah, purportedly by Zoroaster. <laughs> that's what it says, Zoroaster. <laughs> or Zarathustra, uh, the founder of Zoroastrianism. Yeah, Zoroastrianism. I have Zoroast. No yes. <laughs> I know if I go to prison, I'm going to have a Zoroast tomorrow. <laughs> and heavily influenced by the Vedas, uh, mentions bang and lists cannabis as the most important of 10,000 medicinal plants. Wow, it's just one of 10,000. That's crazy. I never knew that. Uh, but apparently that text was written in 700 uh, BC, so or about that time. 600 BC, Indian Medicine Treatise cites cannabis as a cure for leprosy. 
Of course, we found that to not be true. I was wondering then, if that worked. No, it did not. Uh, they were just using it as a probably a way for people to get over the pain of no. it. But uh, it says, uh, people believed it could quicken the mind, prolong life, improve judgment, lower fevers, induce sleep, and cure dys- dysentery. Um, the first major work to lay use out the uses of cannabis in Indian medicine was the Ayurvedic. Ayurvedic. A system, yeah. Hey, hey, hey you're a dick, <laughs> <laughs> and a big one. <laughs> Instead of an enema, we're giving you a pee hole. <laughs> Jam that fucking stalk right in there. Um, a system of Indian medicine treaties of Sushrutha Sam. I don't know. Written in 600 BC, something, something. 911 is sounding. Uh, <laughs> Just say Sanskrit. <laughs> Within the uh, cannabis decided as an anti-phlegmatic and a cure for leprosy, which is not, yeah, we found out that's not what, true. What does anti-phlegmatic mean? It means um, no more, <laughs> you know. Phlegm. Coffee, yeah, phlegm. No more phlegm. Well, that's not to- that's not true. No, actually, yeah. Well, it, I guess it depends. If you're smoking it, it is not true. Right, yeah. But if you're not, if you're taking it oil-wise, I don't think it's probably, it might. I don't know. I don't know. It might just be something that uh, they thought worked back then. But then again, you got to understand something, man. What you see as blue might be purple to me. You know what I mean? So what they knew back then could be completely different from what we know now. They might have been on generation two of the plant, whereas we're on like 30 and 40 generations ahead now where shit is just crazy, crazy strong. So I don't know. I mean, and and there's hybridization of marijuana too, so... Uh, but that's been around forever. 1 AD, the ancient Chinese text recommends marijuana for more than 100 ailments. Mm. Yes, in a compendium of drug recipes compiled in 1 AD, Pen Xiao Qing, based, that's what it says, the name of it is, uh, based on traditions from the time of Shen, uh, Shen Nung, who we talked about earlier, marijuana is depicted as an ideogram, uh, which is a pictorial symbol. Which basically looks like uh, a division. You know how you do dividing? You do that little arm thing. And then underneath of that is two X's with a pipe down each X. So basically it's like an asterisk. Yeah, it's pretty cool looking. Uh, It almost looks like it should be weed except they're missing a leaf. Um, You know. Uh, And then it says of plants drying in a shed. That's basically what it's supposed to represent. Uh, This ancient text recommends marijuana for more than 100 ailments including gout, rheumatism, uh, malaria and absent-mindedness. That's pretty cool. <laughs> that is very fucking cool because you know, see what I'm saying, man? Blue and purple. For them, it may have been something that really did that. For us, it may not. Maybe it, it causes absent-mindedness. Uh, you know, uh, in 30 A.D., Jesus allegedly uses anointing oil made with cannabis. In the Bible's New Testament, Jesus. Wait a minute. Wait what? a minute. Wait a minute. Wait. Wait. Time out. Time mm, out. Yeah. 30 AD. Yeah. He was dead. I know. Well, it he says, wasn't there anymore. It says 30. That's all it says. It doesn't say AD. It just says 30. So I'm thinking they mean 30 AD. Right. It's the 33 years in between BC and AD. Okay. That's what I thought, but it doesn't say that. So I'm, I'm not exactly sure how to put this. Uh, it says it's around the year 30 AD. I don't know. Um, anointed his disciples with a potent, ethogenic, psychoactive substance, oil. Ethogenic oil. Uh, sending out the 12 apostles to do the same around the year 30 AD is what it's saying. Likewise, after Jesus' passing, James suggests that anyone of the Christian community who was sick should call to the elders to anoint him with oil in the name of Jesus. So that's where they, and then, you know. That right. is in the Bible. So did Jesus use cannabis? I think so. The word Jesus, or the word Christ does mean the anointed one. And Ben. Bennett contends that Christ, oh Christ, I'm sorry, was anointed with chirum or chirism, uh, cannabis-based oil, which caused his spiritual visions. The ancient recipe for this oil, recorded in Exodus, which we already read, included over nine pounds of flowering cannabis tops, known as kene bosom in Hebrew, um, extracted into a hen about eleven or so pints of olive oil with a variety of other herbs and spices. It sounds like fucking chicken. What are we making here? Uh, The mixture was used in anointing and fumigations that significantly allowed the priests and prophets to see and speak to Yahweh, which Yahweh being the name of God, supposedly. Uh, But they, they, 
Yeah, they used pot apparently to uh, to make it so that they could uh, you know see things and hear things, which is really weird. Again, blue and purple. You know what I mean? Are they experiencing these things seriously? Because later on in life, it just gets. I mean, later on in history, it gets really crazy. Uh, in year seventy. Roman medical text cites cannabis to treat earaches and suppress sexual longing. I don't know what they mean by sexual longing, though. That's kind of fucked up. Yeah, what, what, what do they mean? <laughs> I don't know if that's an extension of peni. <laughs> <laughs> or if that's like the longing for somebody. I don't are they, know. Are they treating horniness or the lack of horniness? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to eliminate. That's the only thing you could be treating. Let's with. read through here. It says uh, Dioscorides, Scorides, Dioscorides stated bluntly that the plant which was used in the making of rope also produced a juice that was used to treat treat earache and suppress sexual longing. It doesn't really say. It has to be suppressed. Longing has to be. Yes. It makes you not back horny. back to horniness. Yeah. It's got to be gotta be making you less horny. I don't think anything like that ever existed. Jeez, man. Okay, smoking pot is one thing. Smoking pot for that is another thing. Yeah. So, yeah. Just smoke pot and go toss one off in a shower. <laughs> Enjoy. Or toss one off and then go smoke pot. <laughs> Enjoy both of them. I had smoked two joints before I smoked two joints. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then I smoke two more. Uh, Pliny the Elder writes in 79, Pliny the Elder writes about medicinal properties of the <coughs> cannabis plant. In 200, Chinese surgeon Hua To uses cannabis resin and wine as anesthetic. We've discussed that. Uh, as you can tell, a lot of this is Chinese, which is cool. Uh, eight to 900, cannabis used as medicine in an Arabic world by some labeled lethal poison by others. So some say it's it's a worldly thing, and others said it was a lethal poison. Huh. Hmm. They must not have been smoking it. Uh, Fifteen hundred Muslim doctors use marijuana to reduce sexuality. That's exactly the same here to stave off the longing. Um, and let's read what it says. After the fifteen hundreds, once Islam spread to India, Muslim M O S L E M doctors used the Parisian, or no, I'm sorry, the Persian theories. To guide their use of cannabis, their applications tended to stress the late effects rather than the early ones, so they used it, for instance, as a means of reducing sexuality rather than increasing it. Huh. It sounds like you got one off and then, yeah, you went ahead and go smoke it. I don't know. Um, so let's discuss the hemp through during the Middle Ages. Uh, during the Middle Ages, hemp was central to any herbalist's medicine cabinet. William Turner, the naturalist, considered the first English botanist, praised it in the new herbal. Herbal. That's why we call it herb, I bet. Because that's what it is. You can put it in a salad. You can have it on fucking French toast. You can do whatever you want with it. Uh, which was published in 1538. 1578, Chinese medical text describes med medicinal uses for marijuana. And, of course, that's the same shit we've always been talking about. The Chinese know... Uh, that they can use it for pretty much anything to stimulate appetite, uh, dysentery, and diarrhea. Um, stimulate diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's my kind of shit. Okay. Uh, no, wait a minute. Um, yeah, enema. Now we get to the more pertinent um, eras. I'm gonna I'm gonna blow right through these because I've got probably I've only gotten about one tenth of the page down. So oh I'm gonna, shit! I'm gonna blow through these. If we have any questions about it, we'll figure it out. But we're just gonna read the titles. 1600s. William Shakespeare may have smoked cannabis. Oh wow. Uh, 1611 to 1762. Jamestown settlers bring marijuana to North America. Oh. Well, fucking awesome they are. And so, then they all disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to go for a walk. <laughs> <laughs> we go and walk about. <laughs> yeah, go for it, man. Just take this bag with you. Um, 16, <laughs> 1621, popular English mental health book recommends cannabis to treat depression. Uh, English uh, clergyman and Oxford scholar Robert Burton says you should use it to treat depression. That's actually true, um, because you really never see anybody that gets high depressed. Uh, I am. Really? I'm clinically depressed. I've been diagnosed with it. Yeah. And, um, but I mean, I'm saying to the, to the point where it, you haven't gone to the extreme of depression. You know what I mean? Like, you haven't, like, taken yourself out or, or you know, done something really crazy. You know I've what I mean? Come close. But, you, yeah, but being, being well... Yeah, okay. I, Who knows? I, I, it might have been the weed that, uh, that, that held me there. back. Yeah. 
that held me back from doing something. That could be. Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. See, that's that's the weird thing. A lot of the people that I know that get stoned don't fucking uh, don't usually have depression, or if they do, it's not. It's very hard to explain. It's not so much of a depression that they want to hurt themselves. You know what I mean? It's just like being depressed, and you're just depressed. This is this is pothead depression. You ready? Yeah. yeah. What's the matter, man? Oh man, I'm all depressed. Oh, why are you all depressed? Uh, I ran out of weed, and my weed dealer won't have any. <laughs> Till tomorrow. <laughs> Marijuana. I gotta wait until tomorrow. What the fuck was that? That was marijuana in Nepali. Marijuana. Marijuana. <laughs> Anyways, herbalist Nicholas Culpepper writes about medicine about medical uses for marijuana or for hemp. Uh, 1745 to 1775, George Washington grows hemp. Mm-hmm. We've known about that for mm-hmm. many, 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 many years. According to his agricultural ledgers, he has a particular interest in the medicinal use of cannabis, and several of his di- di- diary entries indicate that he indeed was growing cannabis with a high THC content. Mm-hmm. Who is this? George Washington. Oh, I thought it was just him. Our founding father. Okay. okay. Yes. No, it was, it was, yeah. THC and Delta 9. He wanted that shit to be in there. Uh, put some hemp into the water about 6 o'clock in the afternoon. Note this hemp has been pulled the 8th inst and was well dried and took it out again the 26th. Oh, so he's been putting it in the water. <laughs> nice. He's getting everybody. 1774 to 1824, Thomas Jefferson grows hemp at Monticello. Now, Monticello is in Virginia. Mm -hmm. And that being the case, they grew some great weed there. But he grew a lot of stuff. Um, Actual hemp, tobacco, and pretty much other substances that he could, you know, grow that would be used that are not typical crops. Uh, 1799, Napoleon's forces bring marijuana from Egypt to France. Mm. This is an important undertaking because... This now moves marijuana from being an African thing. Uh, we'd already been introduced by uh, the jo- Jamestown people bringing it to North America. It's like, hey, man, uh, Native Americans here, look, man, they got some this thing called corn, maize. Oh, cool. We can eat that. Cool. What should we give them? Don't give them the fucking pot, man. Are you out your mind? <laughs> We're growing that shit, you know. Give them that alcohol shit. Yeah. (laughs) How about these blankets? (laughs) No, 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 no. We use those blankets on people that had smallpox. How about these blankets? (laughs) Assholes. Anyway. uh, Yeah. So um, that's an interesting thing because uh, bringing it from Africa over to France starts the, um, the wonderful world of marijuana in the European area establishments. Nobody, I think, had it before then, if so, I'm not mistaken. So, France was the first place. France was French, the first in Europe, yeah. The French were the first. It's That's what it's looking like, yes. Um, wasn't even brought from China or India. I mean, somebody might have brought it. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I've got this stash of green shit. It's really great. It's smoking. It fucking makes me high. But then that was all they had. You know what I mean? They weren't bringing, like, plants over and saying, hey, let's produce this. You know, let's, let's grow this. So, I mean, there's a possibility it's been around, but... I think this, what they're saying here is that uh, his forces, Napoleon's forces, um, end up bringing it back. <clears throat> and they're basically the ones that saturated the world. And then Our, Johnson's the, uh, forces brought it back from Vietnam to America. Yeah, that too. Yeah, different strains. Yeah. Uh, we'll keep reading here. 1840, medical marijuana comes to the United Kingdom via William O'Shaughnessy and reportedly used by Queen Victoria for menstrual cramps. This is starting to piss me off. What? Why? Because uh, you'll see later on. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, so um, she ended up getting it, and she smoked it, and apparently, or used it in a tea form, I guess, proprietary medicine. Uh, okay, 1840s, marijuana becomes mainstream medicine in the West. Uh, that is uh, the 1840 by a French doctor by the name of Jacques-Joseph Moreau, a French psychi- a psychiatrist. Found that marijuana suppressed headaches, increased appetites, and aided people to sleep. That's exactly what it does for me. Um, Go through with, that list again. Headaches, headaches, sleeping, and appetite. Increased appetite. Okay. Marijuana is added to the U.S. pharmacopoeia. Basically, a pharmacopoeia is just a, a book 
that basically says, here's what we have, and we know that is this specific medicine or, P-H-A-R. you know what I mean? P-H-A-R. Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, and it made its way in there, and it says, uh, no, let me just read this. By, ni- by 1850, marijuana had made its way into the United States Pharmacopoeia, an official public standard setting authority for all prescription and over-the-counter medicines which listed marijuana as treatment for numerous afflictions, including neurologia, which is your brain just going off fucking getting crazy, um, tetanus, typhus, cholera, rabies, dysentery, alcoholism, opiate addiction, anthrax, leprosy, incontinence, gout, convulsive disorders, tonsillitis, insanity, excessive menstrual bleeding, and uterine bleeding, among others. Patented marijuana tinctures were sold. In other words, they're little bottles of marijuana oil, I, I guess. I, I wonder if it helps. If it, I wonder if it really does help with menstruation as far as the blood flow. I, I know, and I don't mean to be a jerk about this, but I know it improves their attitude. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And they're... You, hey... Uh, it improves everybody's attitude, though. <laughs> <laughs> you think about it, I think there's never been a time where I was like, you know what, you need an attitude adjustment, man, because you're fucking not high enough or something, yeah. <laughs> just never happens yeah, I, I don't mean to um make fun of uh women's monthly uh visitor no even though i do yeah but I, that has to be <laughs> one one pain in the ass yeah oh, every yeah. month oh dealing man. with that yeah. shit yeah. deal with that not only that then you had to put up with all the bullshit that went along with it like the messiness of it the fucking not being clean because nobody ever took a bath every other day back in the old west or whatever i think it was once a week thing if you were lucky yeah and you had to draw that shit yourself which is a big pain in the ass but uh yeah i think um there's a good possibility that uh you're right i think uh it's 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 a can shitty I, thing can i ask a question that is totally off uh subject here. go for it it's rather uncolorful <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it's very colorful. Is it black and white or does it have color in it? <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead. I think it's translucent. <laughs> okay. Um it's not like milk like ours. But um <laughs> <laughs> have you you know what chafing is on your legs? Yeah. You know what that is. Yeah. Some people call it chub rub. Chub rub. Yeah. Yep, that could be it too. Yeah. Walker's rash. There's Walker's a bunch of different rash. names different names for it. Yeah. You know there, and then there's other kinds of things that you can get down there that, you know. Yeah, boils. Boils and all kinds of that thing. But there is one condition that I found out about that I have that not that long ago that does cause boils to grow down there. And it's not due to uncleanliness. It's just that you have this condition. But anyway, go ahead. Do you find that maybe a woman's sexual secretions are natural ad- anesthetic? Aesthetic? What do you mean? Like? Painkiller. Like, <clears throat> all right, I'll just come out and say it. When a woman comes all over your cock. <laughs> <laughs> this should have been in the porn fucking one last week. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Do you do you think maybe that, that, that her juices maybe might ease a little bit of chub rub or chafing or boils or pain? In other words, is it like a topical anesthetic or yes. a topical, yes. uh, not anesthetic, but I yes. know what you're saying, yeah. Um, and maybe it's intended to be that way because it, we haven't had a good history of taking baths in our human history, but we right. have had a remarkable history of fucking. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So, so do you think maybe that it's a natural? I don't t- think people got chub rub as much as we do. You don't think nowadays? Yeah, I think the old west and beyond back. Um, people didn't get it as much because they just weren't that heavy. Because they were calloused. <laughs> <laughs> Walk fucking everywhere. The between your legs is rougher than leather. <laughs> crunch, <laughs> crunch, crunch, exactly. crunch. That bitch could crack a walnut with her legs. <laughs> Not because she was strong, but damn, she had thighs of leather. <laughs> I threw her leg back and broke it, and the motherfucking gravy rolling out of it. <laughs> no, seriously, um, I, I see what you're saying, and I honestly think, and this is going to sound horrible, but funny at the same time, maybe it's like WD-40. <laughs> you know what I mean? You get a little a very, bit of, it's a very good lubricant. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like WD-40. I think it just makes everything more slippery. And if that's the case, and you have chub rub, 
then yeah, it probably lubricates that. So number one, it doesn't hurt as bad. And number two, but here's the thing, man. And this, I know this is the most disgusting fucking thing you can practically think of. But there are people out there that are like, you know what? Save the placenta. I want to eat it. (laughs) Oh, my God, man. Get some bread at least. (laughs) (laughs) Slice that shit up, fry it up, put it on bread. Who the hell wants to eat that? There's women that do, man. What? Women want to eat it. I'm thinking it it. was disgusting men. I know. No, it was women. It's the women that give birth. And one of the things that they do is they make tea out of it. I shit you not, man. It's fucking gross. It's gross as shit, but, you know, what are we going to do? We can't be like, oh, you know, uh, that's just fucking disgusting. And this, this tea reminds me of my very first meal. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell's that? <laughs> Why does it taste like pussy? <laughs> You know, it's funny, but there used to be this <laughs> joke when I was a kid. And the joke was, just real quick, the joke was, um, you would say, and you've probably heard me say it before, uh, you know, um, have you ever had pussy around your neck? Mm-hmm. And it, and people were like, no. And you're like, what, were you a butthole, baby? <laughs> <laughs> and there was always a comeback that we never knew as kids that one, somebody could have been like, no, I was a C-section. You know what I mean? And we never thought about that. You know, and, but that was the thing. You would, you would, the, the joke was really funny until somebody would fucking come up and spoil it. But yeah. Or be that. all serious. No, I was C-section. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it was definitely, uh, yeah. See, that's me. Anyway, so let's get back to the pot. Let's get back to the weed. We're almost out of the, ni- uh, a, the 19th century. So we'll take a look here. 1889 article in the Lancet outlines use of cannabis for opium withdrawal, which, we are now discovering that this is a beautiful thing for people that have opiate problems. It is very good for opiate withdrawal. Yes. The people that are having problems getting off of heroin, getting off of all this, anything. I mean, it could be fentanyl, it could be uh, uh, morphine, any of these. Uh, you smoke it or you take it, ingest it somehow, um, do some edibles, doesn't matter. Yeah, it helps you with the withdrawals. And then in 1893 to 1894, Indian Hemp Commission mentions several medical uses of cannabis. Concerned about cannabis as an intoxicant leads the government of India to establish the Indian Hemp Commission of 1893 to 1894 to examine the question of cannabis use in India, of which they did find that some of this was good stuff. Um, Yeah, I know, right? Okay, so let's get into the 1900s. This is where it gets fucking crazy. Cannabis used for asthma, bronchitis, and loss of appetite in South Asia. This was in the 1900s. Now, if we haven't noticed, this marijuana has started mostly from China. Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, yes, I have And it's made its way that. around. So, yeah, it was there, but I think it was also in, uh, in Africa as well. well. So it may have actually started there, but then moved to Asia. But Asia is using it the most, so people are growing it like crazy. Uh, in 1906, <clears throat> Pure Food and Drugs Act requires labeling of medicine, including cannabis. So if your medicine had cannabis in it, guess what? It had to be on the package. You had to be able to read it. And it was signed by President Roosevelt, which is Teddy Roosevelt. Roosevelt. Roos, Rose, Roosterveld, whatever. Uh, 1911, the year that the uh, very first... Uh, Pistol was made, a semi-automatic pistol. Uh, Massachusetts becomes the first state to outlaw cannabis, which is really weird because they're leading the way sort of in the recreational cannabis world. Um, They, yeah, the bolstered by the progressive era faith in big government, the 1910s marked a high tide of prohibition, prohibitionist sentiment in America. In 1914 and 1916, alcohol prohibition initiatives would make the state ballot. Meanwhile, the legislature was tackling such moral issues as prostitution, racetrack gambling, prize fighting liquor, and oral sex. Oh. Yes, oral sex. You know what? I Did they got, debate that orally? Yeah, we're going to have to talk about sex someday. Not porn, sex. Um, admit, uh, oh, amidst this profusion of vices, Indian hemp, a.k.a. cannabis, was but a minor afterthought. States banned cannabis in the 1910s that's Massachusetts, Maine, Wyoming, Indiana, New York City, Utah, Vermont, Colorado, Nevada, 
as in California, these laws were passed not due to any widespread use or concern about cannabis, but as regulatory initiatives to discourage further future use. Um, and then in January of 1915, President Wilson signs the Harrison Act, the model for future drug regulation legislation. Yeah. So Wilson's the one that started this shit. So take it out on him. Um, in 1915 and 1927, 10 states passed marijuana prohibition laws, and that's basically the ones I just read to you. Uh, Texas, Washington, Arkansas, Nebraska, Oregon, Nevada, Iowa, Wyoming, the, and the state of New York. Uh, U.S. Pharmaceutical, 1918. U.S. Pharmaceutical Farm grows 60,000 pounds of cannabis annually. Damn. Yes, and uh, up to World War One, pharmaceutical supplies of cannabis indica were entirely imported from India. That's probably why it has right, the it's name called indica. indica. Yeah, and occasionally Madagascar. So apparently Madagascar had some weed too. You know what the biggest thing in Madagascar exports is? Beetles. No. Um, I think I have heard of this, but go ahead. And... Vanilla. Uh, okay. Yeah, believe it or not. In accordance with the U.S. Pharmacopoeia, which specified that it come from flowering tops of the Indian variety, which is indica. Uh, the League of Nations in 1925 signed a multilateral treaty restricting cannabis use to scientific and medicinal use only. That's League of Nations. That means nothing. It's the, the prime before the United Nations. Um 1928, cannabis added to the UK's Dangerous Drugs Act. So 1928, now it became a uh, illegal dangerous drug. And it said cocaine was added in 1920, so eight years before. So yeah, cocaine was kind of taken out. Remember when Coke was made with cocaine? No, I don't, but you know, apparently it was. I, supposedly, yeah. I yeah. I don't know if that's true. Uh, 1930s, the, the use of the word marijuana increases in the United States. The currency of the word marijuana increased greatly in the United States in the 1930s in the context of the debate over the use of the drug, the term being preferred as a more exotic alternative to the familiar words hemp and cannabis. Yeah. Influence of a folk entomology from the Spanish personal name Maria Juana. <laughs> really? Yeah. Or its familiar form, Mary Juana, has frequently been suggested. If so, this would appear to have occurred within English. So it's Maria Juana, which is the female form of Juan. That's how it was named. I think that's fucked up, man. I never knew that. Which is John. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, that's that's messed up. I never knew that's where that came from. That That information came from the Oxford... English dictionary. Say that again. Say the whole thing again. That way it w I'm clear. Okay. Uh, just that last sentence. Yes. Influence of a folk entomology from the Spanish personal name Maria Juana or its familiar form Mary Juana had, in, had frequently been suggested. If so, this would appear to have occurred within English. So in English, not Spanish, is how we ended up coming up with the name Marijuana. It's a combination of the two Mexican names, which is funny because Mexico is not the place that we initially got it from. <laughs> right, exactly. We got it from here. Anyways, it's Spain? No. No. They, no. Spain and Mexico were one of the last ones to get it. Right. So Mar Mary and John. Yeah. Mary and John? I don't know. If it had been Joseph, I'd have been like, oh, I get it now. It's, yeah. <laughs> Mary and Joseph. <laughs> oh, another Christ connection. <laughs> <laughs> Man, we're going to get so high, we're going to see Christ. Come on, let's go. You know. 1930s, American pharmaceutical firms sell extra, extracts of marijuana as medicines. So there you are, folks. 1930s starts it selling it as medicines. Oh, and guess who the two, uh, the two big companies were? Park Davis, which is still around, and Eli Lilly. Which is the Lily Company, which is also still around. What do they make? They they but they both make drugs. Oh, yeah. And they were selling standardized extracts of marijuana for use as an analgesic, which is a aspirin basically, an antispasmodic, which is something that prevents you from having spasms. Spasms muscle. Yeah, and sedatives. So basically, they were using the pure extracts of marijuana for those things. Another company, Grimalt and Company, marketed marijuana cigarettes as a remedy for asthma. 
<laughs> they didn't have a good fucking grasp of what was going on, but okay. 1930, Harry J. Anslinger appointed commissioner of the Federal Bureau of Narcotics. This was before, of course, the DEA. In 1930, Congress consolidated the drug control effort in the Federal Bureau of Narcotics, the FBN, uh, led by the endlessly resourceful Commissioner Harry Jacob Anslinger, who became the architect of national prohibition. His case rested on two fantastical assertions that the drug caused insanity and that it pushed people towards horrendous acts of criminality. This wasn't the guy that actually, you know, banned the shit. His, I'm pretty sure his will be coming up here in a minute. Yeah. Uh, 1933, William Randolph Hearst plays role in denouncing marijuana. So here you have one of the biggest, most richest family people in the world coming out against marijuana. And this is where it all starts to go downhill. Uh, it becomes a target of, of government control and created sensationalistic stories linked violent acts to cannabis consumption. Most Many of the most outlandish stories appear... Oh, that's the other thing, is Hearst is one of the biggest newspaper owners at this time. Uh, many of the most outlandish stories appeared in newspapers published by William Randolph Hearst. Hearst reportedly had financial interest in the lumber and paper industries... He, he may have sought to eliminate competition from hemp. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so now we're getting a little sticky, and not the good sticky kind either. 1936, Bureau of Narcotics urges federal action to control marijuana. Blah, 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 blah. It is difficult to know precisely the extent of marijuana use in the 1930s. The Narcotics Bureau itself never provided any official estimate. The Bureau spoke only of widespread use. And that was it. Wow, that's just fucked up. It just they were saying, "Oh, it's been used. To, everybody's using it. Everybody's using it." That's why we got to get rid of it. New medications supplant marijuana as treatment for pain. By the end of 1936, they had new uh, new laws to regulate marijuana. Its decline in medicine was hastened by the development of aspirin, morphine, and other opium der- derived drugs. And, and in some cases, those are better. Yes, yes, for mind-numbing pain, yes. But it's interesting that marijuana actually opened up that door. But anyways. Very much so. And then they finally started uh, replacing marijuana as a treatment for all those things. The 1936 film, Reefer Madness, cautions against marijuana and basically goes and fucking tells you all kinds of stupid, crazy shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and if I say we had time, I'd say let's just play that movie, but yeah. Did you know that it's the number two biggest cult film? Really? Yeah. You know what number one is? Uh, um, Rocky Mountain Horror Picture Show. You got it. Yeah. Yep, the Rocky Horror Picture Show's number one. Reefer Madness is number two. Um... American Medical Association opposes the proposed Marijuana Tax Act and supports research on medical cannabis. This is the AMA, and this is the early version, the 1937 version. And they propose that we go and test this stuff. Too many people said maybe we shouldn't, but they went ahead and did it anyway, apparently. So, um, 1937, the Marijuana Tax Act leads to decline in marijuana prescriptions. So basically, they're squashing the shit out of growing and and using marijuana. And that really sucks. Because, (laughs) you know, yeah. Because, you know, marijuana is now no longer being used for medicinal stuff. Um, The first, in 1937, the first marijuana seller convicted under U.S. federal law, is arrested. On the day the Marijuana Tax Stamp Act was enacted, October 2nd, 1937, which is only nine years before my mom was born, uh, the FBI and Denver, Colorado police raided the Lexington Hotel and arrested Samuel L. Caldwell, 58, an unemployed laborer, and Moses Baca, 26. <coughs> On October 5th, Caldwell went into the history trivia books as the first marijuana seller convicted under U.S. federal law. His customer, Baca, was found guilty of possession. Mm. <laughs> Caldwell was sentenced to four years of hard labor. 
in Leavenworth Penitentiary. Mm, 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 plus a $1,000 mm. fine, which in today's money is probably like $60,000. Yeah, yeah, easily. Baca received 18 months incarceration. Both men served every day of their sentence. A year after Caldwell was released from prison, he died. I know, right? So that just... Mm, it just makes me fucking angry. They killed him. They basically, yeah, 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 eight, yeah, yeah, four years of fucking hard labor and he for died. weed. And the picture they're and, showing of this guy is he's old. You know, he's like crotchety looking. And, and meanwhile, those people were going home every night getting drunk. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And here it was. You can ride. You're driving a car and and fucking slam into something and kill a bunch of people. Can't do that on weed, no matter how hard you try. And I've tried. It was like, everybody in the car, we're all going to die, man. Wait a minute. Did I just say that out loud or not? <laughs> I don't think I said it out loud. Fuck it. I don't remember. What, what was I talking about? <laughs> Let's try something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I got to go to the convenience store and get some fucking Fruit Loops. I'm fucking hungry. Let's eat. So 1938, Canada prohibits cannabis cultivation. So they no longer can grow cannabis there. 1942, marijuana removed from U.S. pharmacopoeia. So remember that book that they mm -hmm. put everything in? Mm -hmm. Marijuana's been removed. Mm. 1938 to 1944, LaGuardia report concludes marijuana less dangerous than commonly thought. This is the New York City Mayor Fiorello LaGuardia, who the airport is named after. And he requested the New York Academy of Medicine conduct an investigation of marijuana. And they came back saying there's not a damn thing wrong with it. The Boggs, okay, now we're in the 1950s. The Boggs Act in 1951 established minimum prison sentence for simple possession. So then they had to start coming up with shit that, this is how much it's going to be if you get fucking caught. 1956, inclusion of marijuana in Narcotics Control Act leads to stricter penalties for marijuana possession. 1961, UN Convention provides basis for future federal prohibition of marijuana. 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 THC, the main psychoactive compound of cannabis, was first identified and synthesized. Can you take a guess at what year? Delta 9 tetrahydrocannabinol. oil. Cannabinol. 1949. Oh, we're in the 50s now. Oh, 50s oh, oh. and later. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, 1960, give me a number. Nine. Nope, four. 1964 THC is first identified, and they started synthesizing it uh, from a professor who was at the medicinal chemistry at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. <laughs> yeah, so. It's crazy yeah. thing again. Could, um, not be, could not be a fucking American thing, no. Has to be somebody else. Anyway. Um... Yeah, I forget what I was going to say. You know, short-term memory is, uh, uh, I don't remember. <laughs> 1968, University of Mississippi becomes the official grower of marijuana for the federal government. Did you know that? No. 1968, well, no wonder, man. Imagine going there for fucking school. No wonder they were so cool. Yeah. They just didn't like black people. Anyway, April 8th, 1968, President Johnson creates the Bureau of Narcotics and Dangerous Drugs, the BNDD. Did you know that that existed? No, but it was probably the precursor to the DEA. DEA yeah, that's, or, that's what I would think, too. Or the um, ATF. I'm thinking it's probably, yeah, I'm thinking the DEA. But here it says... Uh, was effective 19, April 8th, 1968, and placed the Federal Bureau of Narcotics of the Treasury and the Bureau of Drug Abuse Control of the FDA, from the FDA, you know, into the Department of Justice. You know the Department of the Treasury is very powerful. Oh, yes. That, that, that's where the Secret Service comes from. Yeah. Did you see that, that whole shebang about uh, a couple weeks back? About uh, Nikki Haley, who's the ambassador to the United States, getting into it with the Secretary of the Treasury. Huh. Yeah, the Secretary of the Treasury said, "Yeah, she must have she must have been confused when she made the comment that she was gonna that we're getting ready to impose sanctions, uh, you know, financial sanctions on Russia." Uh huh. Yeah, the dude, uh, the dude from the Treasury was like, "Yeah, yeah, she uh, she mentioned that during the UN summit, and uh, I think uh, yeah, she's a little confused about what can be possibly done." 
So she put out a fucking bulletin saying, I don't get confused. <laughs> right. But you're right, man. The Treasury controls a lot of shit, yeah. man. As a matter of fact, I, I think they have run the U.S. Marshals, don't they? Marshals and Secret Service. And Secret Service, yeah. yeah. Well, it started that the Secret Service was not to protect the go- the uh, president. No, you know it, that. Was, it was to, uh, for, um, to um, a counteract... Um, Counterfeiting, counterfeiting and, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and any type of uh, heinous tr- uh, crimes that'd be committed against uh, the, the treasury. Um, yeah, so that yeah, dude, that's yeah, yeah, they've gotten powerful. Yeah, very much so. Maybe a little too powerful. Uh, 1968, November 1st, UK Wooten report finds cannabis is less dangerous than alcohol and other drugs. <sighs> So we've been trying to fucking tell everybody that for God knows how long. Okay, 1970s to 1990s. Uh, Controlled Substance Act classifies marijuana as a drug with no accepted medical use. This was 1970. Can you believe that shit? Wow. Yeah, they went to say that and everybody else in the world says that marijuana has an, an a ethical use for medicinal purposes. I don't get it. And in the same year, Our Buddies Normal was founded. 1970, <laughs> National Organization for the Reform of Marijuana Laws. Uh, and they fought long and hard, and they've been fighting, and they're still fighting to try and get that shit legalized. What are they going to do when they're successful? Stop being, or they'll probably be like one of the, okay, here's what I think uh, is probably going to happen to Normal. For all this time, they've been fighting about trying to get marijuana legalized again, or at least to bring it to a medicinal purpose and not just, you know, recreational. But they've been pushing the recreational edge, too. They've been going on and on. Now, if it gets legalized countrywide, the whole country gets legalized, then I think what they're going to do is they're going to become the group that all employers will send their people to, their employees, to get trained about marijuana think about it man that they would be the perfect group of people to do that you're going to go and get training on marijuana you know marijuana usage or blah 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 here's the people to go and do it to be honest with you man it's like it's like cigarettes cigarettes we always thought never had any problems there was nothing to it it was glamorous to smoke cigarettes it didn't do anything to you blah 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 and then people started dying off and then they realized well something fucked up about that so they went and checked and did all this shit Legal, it's still legal to smoke cigarettes, even though we know there's a good possibility that 90% of the people that smoke die early because of smoking. But they won't legalize marijuana. You know what I mean? If you smoke, you know what happens if you smoke cigarettes too fast? You know that nicotine poisoning you get when your head gets all weird and you feel like you want to throw up? That lightheaded, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. That is a, it's comparable to a marijuana high but without all the negative side effects. Mm-hmm. It's something that's it's re, uh, transforming your brain into something different. Uh, that being the case, why the fuck is smoking still legal, but marijuana isn't? Uh, well, dude, they believed that... What was that one absolute line they believed from that movie, um, Reefer Madness? Oh, no, no. You told me about it last week or two weeks ago. Yeah. It turned him into a bat. Yeah. The yeah, guy yeah. claimed he smoked it and turned it into a bat. Yeah, which they didn't have. He happen believed here. that. Yeah. And a lot of other people believed that. Exactly. Without exactly. even checking it for themselves. Right. Yeah. And that's the weird thing is that, you know. I ain't smoking it. I don't want no wings. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to hang upside down. I don't like upside down. Uh, yeah. Well, in 1971, UK introduces the drug classification system, which we did sort of borrow from when we came up with the classification systems. Uh, May 1971, Nixon says he will not legalize marijuana despite the Schaefer Commission. Schaefer is the one that he, um, he's the one that said he turned into a bat, by the way. Ah. Yes. Uh, which they don't have it on here. I don't know why they don't have this on here. I don't know why this, this dude's not in here unless I skipped over it somewhere. Uh, yeah, Dr. Schaefer was the expert in drugs, and he was the one that went in front of a, uh, a jury, basically, and said, hey, you know what, uh, marijuana turned me into a bat, you know? And I'm thinking, dude, did you hit any balls? What'd you do? Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. want to suck your doobie. <laughs> Does it have leather? 
And those little red, the little red stoops going through it. If so, I'm going to put the Louis Vuitton Slugger right here on my chest. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, yeah. So I don't know. It's, but the Schaefer Commission is the people of that dude. Uh, President Nixon declares war on drugs. He was the first one to do it. 1971, June 17th. President Nixon at a press conference. America's public enemy number one in the United States is drug abuse. In order to fight and defeat this enemy, it is necessary to wage a new all-out offensive. Why so serious? <laughs> I am not a hookah. <laughs> I don't smoke pot. I don't know what pot is. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, so he declared the war. Uh, it did not come about when um, everybody thinks it did, for the most part. They thought, like, um, the Bushes or Reagans or, you know, say no to drugs. No, that didn't happen then. It did after a few more presidents, but uh, or before a few more presidents. It was Nixon that started the whole thing. 1972 National Commission on Marijuana and Drug Abuse. The Schaefer Commission recommends decriminalizing marijuana. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, the more we talk about it, the more frustrated I become. And it's like, can't you people who are my ancestors realize exactly? Can't you think for yourself? Can't you see? Can't, turn Actually, them into a bat? You yeah. believe that? Well, it wasn't Schaefer. I'm sorry, I had that wrong. This was um, this was a different person. Uh, this is the former Pennsylvania governor Raymond Schaefer, who was the one that created this commission, and he's the one that said. We should decriminalize marijuana. Possession of marijuana for personal use would no longer be an offense, but marijuana possessed in public would remain contraband, subject to summary seizure and forfeiture. Casual distribution of small amounts of marijuana for no remuneration, in other words, if you gave somebody a joint without them paying for it, or insignificant remuneration not involving profit would no longer be an offense. So in other words, if you sold somebody a bag of weed that you bought for 25 bucks to them for 25 bucks, it would be legal. Go figure. So the DEA was created, by the way. Uh, 1972 normal uh, petitions the DEA to reschedule marijuana instead of it being a class one drug. They wanted to make, or I'm sorry. Oh, was this? Yeah, they wanted to make it a schedule two drug which would then free it up a little more, but they would not do that. 1973, the Drug Enforcement Agency is established. The Bureau of Narcotics and Dangerous Drugs and the Office of Drug Abuse Law Enforcement, Odale, <laughs> that's funny, are merged to form the US DEA. Uh, 1974, NIDA established a new... A new um, Nixon was the one that made the DEA, by the way. And I was right. Uh, 1974, NIDA established, placed in charge of contracts to grow marijuana for research purposes. I don't know who the hell need it is. Oh, the National Institutes on Drug Abuse. Okay. They got to grow, grow the weed. Uh, marijuana is decriminalized in the Netherlands in 1976, and it has been all uphill from there. Oh, wait a minute. All down. Or wait a minute. Which way are we going? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even sure anymore. <laughs> it's weird, but both of them have a negative connotation to them. I'm going uphill. It's an uphill battle. Or I'm going downhill. Oh, that's just terrible because you're just going to become a scummy dude. Uh, yeah, so I don't know. Which one do I say? Well, they went sideways. They went around the mountain. Fuck it. Anyway, uh, November 24th, 1976, federal court rules Robert Randall's use of marijuana a medical necessity. So the first person that's able to use marijuana, a D.C. man by the name of Robert Randall, Randall, and who's afflicted by glaucoma, uh, common law doctrine of necessity to defend himself against the criminal charges of marijuana. They dismissed the criminal charges. I did not know this. I did not either. Wow. Federal agencies responded to a May 1976 petition filed by Randall began, began providing this patient with licit FDA approved access to government supplies of medical marijuana. See, they've been doing it for years. Why the, where, the, where the fuck was it? Where were they using it? That's my question. Where were they using it? What, what, how do they? How, where is this fucking shit coming from? You know what I mean? Like they're saying in this this statement, this is a legitimate statement in the Library of Drug Policy that the federal government had access to legally licit controlled marijuana. Like they were able to give out marijuana if they needed to. Who the fuck was getting it? 
I don't know anybody except for this dude now. Oh, I, I, I kind of do. I, I heard this story one time. This guy used to come into Turkey Hill where I worked. Yeah. And he wore these purple suits. Do you know who I'm talking about? No? I don't remember that. No. He, he wore these purple suits, and he always went and hung out at Capital City Mall in, in uh, Camp Hill. Okay. And somebody was telling me about him. So said, yeah, he gets marijuana from the federal government i have heard of these people before really yes i didn't they get, know they get he got hit by a bus oh wow and you know and that's one thing i don't understand i'm sure he's not the only person that got hit by a bus right i'm sure he's not the only person that has some kind of pe- that had some kind of painful accident right why did he get chosen to go through the program i don't know see see I don't know. Maybe it's just one of those things where his doctor knew about it. Maybe he knew the loophole that this guy went Could through. Could be. Could be. And but but it, it. it is interesting that for like most of my adult life, I've heard of people like this existing. I have apparently already met one that existed, but never until tonight have I had confirmation that the federal government was breaking the law. Surprise! <laughs> for years. Yeah. That's so... What? I don't know, man. It's just really fucked up. <laughs> the federal government in 1978 IND Compassionate Use Program supplies patients with marijuana. So this is what it is, what you were just talking about, the investigational new drug applications. Uh, it was part of a lawsuit settled by the Department of Health and Human Services and began supplying cannabis to patients whose physicians applied for and received such a U.S. ID from the FDA. <laughs> There's all these fucking acronyms in here. IND, NIDA, FDA, USDA, USID, DEA. <laughs> Jesus. It's like, ugh. Yeah. Uh, in 1978, New Mexico passes first state law recognizing medical value of marijuana. So they knew about this and they did that, but nobody knew about this shit. They was do this thing called the Controlled Substances Therapeutic Research Act. So they were, you know, looking to see what it would do. So this started in 78. So what year is it? 2018. 30 that was years. 40 years. 50 years ago. 70 years. Or no, 40 years. You're right. 40 years ago. 40 years ago. Dude, that's fucking crazy, man. Mm-hmm. Crazy. They've been knowing, they've known about this shit and it's been... Pre- <sighs> they had a report that they released March 1983. An official progress report on their medicinal... Marijuana program. I don't want to read that because it'd take too long. 1980, Marinol, a synthetic version of THC and smoked marijuana, tested on cancer patients, and apparently it worked out. Mm-hmm. But the government chose to dismiss the state studies and give Marinol the green light. So I don't know, man. I never heard about that. I guess it's something that's cool. 1981, legal mo- medical marijuana patients form organization to help others obtain access. So basically, it's those people you were wondering about, Mr. Purple Suit, mm-hmm. might have been uh, contacted by one of these organizations. And, you know, that's how they got into it. In 1981 to 1985, the U.S. government sells Marinol pa- patent to Unimed. And FDA approves it for treatment of nausea. So you want to get rid of somebody that's getting all of these? Yeah, give them some Marinol. 1985, Marinol approved by the FDA. 1986, Anti-Drug Abuse Act increases penalties for marijuana possession and dealing. <laughs> that would be our that would be our good friend, uh, you know, uh, Ronald Reagan. Are you going to lock up the federal government now for dealing? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, you know, hey. Yeah. What's fair is fair, right? How can the person that makes the laws... Oh, well. Yeah. I'm getting pissed off. And a a later amendment to the Anti-Drug Abuse Act established a three strikes and you're out policy. Yeah, that's when we got that felony three strikes and you're out policy. In September of 1988, the DEA judge Francis Young recommends marijuana be placed in Schedule 2. This was in 88. This was 30 years ago. And now just talking about it from a petition from 1972 from normal. Uh, DEA administrator overrules Francis Young and orders that cannabis remain a Schedule 1 controlled substance. And this, my friend, was during our buddy George H.W. Bush, Mm. his administration. Mm. Anyway, so I'm going to blow right through these next ones. Mm -hmm. I'm going to (laughs) blow. 
1990 to 1999, scientists discover cannabinoid receptors, 1990. 1991, court ruling highlights application of medical necessity defense. June 1991, federal government suspends the IND Compassionate Use Medical Marijuana Program. So they suspended it again because they felt like they had to arrest themselves. <laughs> July 1991, 53% of oncologists surveyed said patients who chew gum. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. 53% of oncologists surveyed say cannabis should be available by prescription. Now, that's oncologists, man. Those are fucking cancer doctors. That's cancer doctors. Right. They should be. Yeah. Nobody listened. November 1st, 1991, first medical marijuana initiative passed in San Francisco. So there it is, my man. I, I, I remember that. November 5th, 1991, first medical marijuana initiative passed in San Francisco called the Pro- Proposition P. That's pretty cool. Pot. And, and it passed with overwhelming 70, 79% of the vote. You know what, man? For everything that we bitch about California being fucked up, the left coast is actually pretty cool when it comes to that kind of shit. They are welcoming and embracing you, you, people you, in I marijuana. Noticed, I've noticed um, each coast have pros and cons about oh, yeah. it. So, some of it's Stone Age, some of it's modern. And um, yeah, why can't we just live in the middle of America? <laughs> <laughs> because they're both all they're all ass backwards there. No, no it <clears> surprises <throat> me that some of the people that I hold in high esteem for their regards of freedom have been very freedom restrictive on this weak ass subject. Yeah. Again, like you said, alcohol's still legal. Yeah. Cigarettes are still legal. Yeah. And then, then fucking weed isn't. This is a, I've never come down from being high, not once ever, where I said, oh my God, that was the worst fucking thing I ever did. You know, I don't know if you know this story, but I've actually, I, I think I've told you a couple of times, maybe. Um, I won't do LSD because I was always so afraid that if you on a bad trip, you get uncontrollable. And I'm so big that like, if I got uncontrollable, there's nobody that's going to stop me. You know what I mean? And that's always been worrisome to me. And I've had several friends tell me, dude, you shouldn't even worry about shit like that because it's not going to happen. You're just going to see what wild colors and things are going to get fucked up. And you know, then you're going to be okay. You know, you're going to come back and you'll be fine. But I don't know that. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I can't promise that that's what's going to happen because people do have bad acid trips. Yeah. <clears throat> and that's the same thing with heroin, crack, <laughs> uh, cocaine, any there, of that. There's, well, never mind. I was going to say there's no reason why to um, try them. But then again, there was really no reason to smoke weed other than intoxication. Right. So that we thought. Was the point. So we thought. But now we're finding out different. 1992, scientists discover first endocannabinoid in our brain. Apparently, the natural version of THC. Did you know we had that? No. Yes. I'll read exactly what this says. 28 years after discovering THC in 1992. (laughs) After discovering THC. Fuck that. That was discovered a lot longer than that. In 1992, Dr. Mo... Fucking... I can't read that name. Uh, Along with Dr. William Devane and Dr. Lumir Hanus... (laughs) <laughs> Somebody's <laughs> fucking with me on that one. Lumi <laughs> Hainis. <laughs> Sorry, Dr. Hainis. Uh, identified the brain's first endi- endogenous cannabinoid, or endocannabinoid, the brain's natural version of THC, which they called an andamide. From the Sanskrit word ananda, which means eternal bliss or supreme joy. Vigorous exercise stimulates the release of... Oh, Come the fuck on. Seriously? I gotta do some, a lot of exercise to enjoy the THC that I naturally have? You pricks. Is that what it is? Yeah, it says vis- vis- ah, vigorous exercise stimulates the release of anandamide. And the sense of euphoric well-being that comes with a healthy workout. Oh, I know what that is. That's, I know. That's, that's, that's um, runner's high. Yeah. Yes. Runner's high. It says what jogging enthusiast refers to as a runner's high. Yeah. Yeah. Is due to elevated levels of endocannabinoids. The endocannabinoid system in the brain is also believed to help mediate emotions, consolidate memory, and coordinate movement. How comes we're not all testing positive for THC or some kind of cannabinoid? It's not the same chemically. It's a little bit different. 
It's what they call like a THC, but it's not THC. It's a something else that basically is like THC, but not. You know how cannabinoids are different than THC? They're like two different things. You can have the cannabinoids, which is medical marijuana for the most part, without getting high. And it's like, well, what the fuck is the purpose then? You know? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. My thoughts. Yeah. Uh, March 19th, 1992, IND Compassionate Use Program officially terminated. 13 existing patients continued to get government marijuana. That must be the guy in the purple suit. Hmm. 1993, American Medical Student Association unanimously endorses rescheduling of marijuana. Okay, so now we're getting more people saying we should do this. In 94, the final decision in 1972 court battle over marijuana rescheduling keeps med- marijuana in Schedule 1, which is bullshit. That was the normal. Yeah, I think that was the normal one. Uh, 1994, Assistant Secretary of Health announces final decision not to reopen IND Compassionate Use Medical Marijuana Program. It's 95, second petition to reschedule marijuana filed. 96, California becomes first state to legalize medical marijuana. Do you remember when that happened? What state? California. Yes. And that was 1996. I don't. I didn't realize no. it was that long ago. Yeah. Yeah, it says uh, voters in California passed a state medical marijuana initiative in 1996 known as Proposition 215. It permits patients and their primary caregivers with a physician's recommendation to possess and cultivate marijuana for the treatment of AIDS, cancer, muscular spasticity, uh, spasticity, yeah, spasticity. No, no, it's a hard one. Migraines and several other disorders. It also protects them from punishment if they recommend marijuana to their patients, which is good. I didn't realize that was in '96, man. Uh, New England Journal of Medicine publishes editorial calling for marijuana to be rescheduled. Now we're getting even stronger. 1997. 1997, NIH study says more study needed to assess potential of medical marijuana. 98, Congress. I just went right past it. Congress prevents implementation of medical marijuana law in D.C. So they weren't able to get medical marijuana, which they ended up doing after point anyway. uh, 1998, Presidents Ford, Carter, and Bush urged voters to reject medical marijuana. Ooh. Did you know that Ford, Carter, and Bush said that shit? Mm. Those dicks. They they released a joint statement. (laughs) 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 Yes, they did. (laughs) 98, Alaska, Oregon, and Washington become second, third, and fourth states to legalize medical marijuana. Now, see, this this sounds weird that it's coming out this fast. I, I remember it in like in the 2000s. That's what I, that's what my memory is telling but me. But this too. is straight from a quite literally the the epitome of information about marijuana, which is really really weird. Uh, but yeah, so they became second, third, and fourth. Um, Nineteen ninety eight, U.S. House of Lords committee recommends legalizing medical marijuana in the U.K. Uh, ninety seven to ninety nine, Institute of Medicine conducts comprehensive study on the me- medical effects of marijuana. And since we have so much information, uh, we know it was a good thing. Uh, 1999, Alaska makes enrollment in state patient registry mandatory. So if you wanted to take marijuana for medicine, you had to to register. That's bullshit. I know. It's always fucking bullshit. Marinol moved to Schedule 3 to increase availability to patients. So they moved medical marijuana to Schedule 3 so people could get it. Believe it or not, that means the DEA... Can't bust you for Marinol. So if you buy the federal government's shit, yeah. yeah. Well, actually, they sold it off, so somebody else is making it. Uh, Health Canada announces funding for re- medical research on marijuana. 1999, Maine becomes fifth state to legalize medical marijuana. 1999. I did not know that either. It seems like this has all been the last 10 years. Yes, and we kind of know what the history is. I'm not going to go through the rest of these because, I mean, it, there is a lot more to still read. I'm only halfway through this thing, believe it or not. And a lot of the information that we find out comes towards the end, and a lot of it's stuff we pretty much already know. And I'm sure there's probably little tidbits in here that would excite or surprise us. But at the same time, to uh, sort of you know, feign off the fact that we're probably killing our our listeners by, you know, reading off all of this shit. Smoking them out. Yeah, we're smoking them out. <laughs> Smoke them if you got them, boys. You know. 
Well, uh, you want to uh, lighten up the mood and play a game? Let's play a game. What do you want to play? Let's play a game. <laughs> Let's play. Do you have any? Do you have any uh, really cool uh, music? Uh, I have. Uh, what well, depends? What kind of game is it? Let's play. Spot the pot. Head. Spot the pot. Head. All right. Give me one second. I will. Uh, I will. Okay. Meanwhile, I'll talk to the. We audience. can do this. Thank you for coming in tonight, folks. Yours. It's now time for Spot the Pot Head. Spot the Pot Head. <laughs> With your host, Dan. All right, man. Definitely uh, spot the potheads. What okay. do you think? Okay, spot the pothead. It's yes, a fun sir. game where I give you three names of three internationally known people, and you tell me which is the pothead. Mm. Now, this is Spot the Pot Head. Volume 1. Volume 1. We play the old guys tonight. Ooh, old guys. Next week when you tune in, we're going to be playing Spot the Pot Head 2. Okay. Cool. Okay, are you ready? I am. Here's the first of seven. Lewis Carroll. Walter Raleigh. William Shakespeare. Spot the Pot Head. Well, we read in the uh, in the downline when we were reading that that Shakespeare might have been a pothead. Yeah, that's what pisses me yeah. the fuck right <laughs> off. Giving away my damn answer. I know, man. Timeline shit fucks everything up. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, let's go. What? Spot the pothead number two. Okay. Queen Victoria. Mm-hmm. King Edward the Third. Mm-hmm. King David. King David of like uh, Jerusalem yes. fame and stuff. Yes. Oh. Queen Victoria. Queen Victoria is right. Yes, because we read that too. Yes, and, and I know why <laughs> she smoked it. Why? Menstrual. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Menstrual cramps. Menstrual issues. Yes. Okay, number three. Spot the pot, head. James Monroe, George Washington, Donald Trump. <laughs> it sure shit ain't Donald Trump. Uh, <clears throat> you know, I think it was speculated that George Washington did it. Well, he did grow it, obviously. Yeah. But no, the uh, smoker was James Monroe. Really? In the later stages of his life. I think I think uh, that's that's fucked up. Yeah. yeah. That is really, really fucked up. Okay, spot the pot, head. Number four, the Macedonians, Egyptian pharaohs, English druid priests. Who is the potheads? Ooh. Uh. I'm going to have to say Egyptians. You are correct, sir. The Egyptian right. pharaohs were yes, potheads. Yes, sir. I don't know why they didn't give it to the rest of their country, and that's okay, too. That's up to them, but... Anyways, spot the pot, head. I think I, think I figured out my, uh, my, uh, my, my, my winning bell is going to sound like... Okay, it didn't play. Fuck, hang on a minute here. Hang on, hang on, hang on. When I get one right, I play... Let's run for the bell. <laughs> yes. Anyway. <laughs> Number five. Number five. Ottoman Sultan Abdul Aziz. Okay. First. Okay. Some, something, something, uh, some, uh, September 11th. <laughs> Genghis Khan. Ooh, Stinkus Khan. Nebo- Napoleon Bonafart. Bonafart. <laughs> <laughs> uh... That's a very good question. Um, I'm going to have to... <laughs> Let's see here. Um, I'm going to go with uh, the first uh, one we couldn't name. Ottoman Sultan Abdulaziz the first. Yes. Yes, sir, that is correct. All right. I know I'm going to taco for that shit. <laughs> Spot the pot, oh. head. Oh, all right. <clears throat> Henry David Thoreau. Mark Twain. Louisa May Alcott. Ooh, all great authors. Um, Spot the pot. Ed. Ed. I'm going to go with uh, Henry Thoreau. Ooh, oh, sorry. Damn it, sorry. sorry. Are we in Canada now? <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. I don't know anything about that. About? <laughs> Louisa May Alcott. Alcott, yes. Was your pothead. Yes, that's and yeah. She wrote Tiny sense. Women yes. whenever she was a... Uh, Little Women. One pill makes you small. Oh, wait, wrong, <laughs> wrong, wrong book. <laughs> yeah. 
Yes, he's following the white rabbit. What can you say? Spot the pot. Spot the pot. Head. Yeah. Question number seven. Okay. Stephen Hawking, Carl Sagan, Jane Goodall. I'm definitely going to say Carl Sagan. You are correct, sir. Did you know that? All right. Yes, I did. You did. You did I know did that. know that. Yeah, because I got high with him once. <laughs> I was only nine. Isn't but, you he know, the one that says? Um, he says. What does he say? This pale blue dot. No. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> no, he says something else. Billions and yes, billions yes. and billions yes, of miles that's away. That's him. That pale blue dot. Yeah. Well, hey, do you have any exit music for our uh, spot the pot? I and... do. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> run, run, run for the border. <laughs> run for the border. In a joint statement. <laughs> <laughs> the DEA and the FBI today announced in a joint statement. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm right. Anyways. Yes. Well, hey, we got one more thing left. Two more things left to do. Two more things yep. left to do. Why don't you go ahead and do the weed movie guessing game? Let's do the weed movie guessing game. Well, I, am I, am I going to be the guesser? I'm so fucking fried. Yeah. Oh, shit. You're the guesser, my oh, man. Oh, shit. Why? What's the matter? I'm not that good at movies. I know. You haven't seen that many movies. Hmm. We have a fucking huge movie theater here, too. You need to come over and watch some movies with me, man. Yeah. We should do that, man. Some weekend. You know, you and a wife come down and we'll uh, we'll do some steaks and we'll fucking sit in there and we'll watch some shit. And yeah. I will cook your charcoal. <laughs> <laughs> yes. An hour after we're done eating, I'm like, Dan, I think your steak's done. <laughs> yeah. All right, so here we go. It's going to be a um, little teeny tiny. It's probably going to be very difficult for you, but some some of our our listeners may know exactly what movie it is. So that being the coolness, let's go ahead and play this. Um, of course, these are going to be clips from the movie, uh, and I will try to get them to play out each uh, individually. So we'll see what happens here. Okay. Um, here we go. We come to see counsel. Come, come, give me kisses. Damn. Kiss him. Fuck no. <laughs> Kiss him. Fuck no. <laughs> Is that Pineapple Express? No, but damn, man, you're actually really, really close in the same amount of time, but uh, it has uh, Franco in it, James Franco. Uh, but, uh, keep going. Try another one. Got another one? Got another one. Do you got another one, me? Mm. Grandma's boy? No. <laughs> it was very close in time to that other one. It's, uh, Your Highness is the name of the movie. Your, your hi- Highness. Oh, Your Highness. Right, exactly. Shit. Yes. Okay. It was actually pretty good. Let's try this one. This one came out in 2014, so I don't know. I don't think you've seen it, but we'll, we'll find out. <laughs> Some of the finest herb in D.C. here. Wow. Yeah, that'll get you high just smelling it. Smells like Tinkerbell's wings. <laughs> <laughs> how, how, how much? Yeah, yeah, how much does it cost? We have 1800 bucks. God damn. <laughs> how much does that cost? We have $1,800. Well, fuck, two kids, man. Jeez. Which one movie do you think that's from? That one's, that one's going to be really rough. The next one's going to be easy for you. Do you want to give up on this one? Yes. It's really rugged because it's not a movie that really made a big rounds kind okay. of thing. It was a movie called Kid Height. Or, um, oh, shit. Hang on. Let me fucking look it up again. Hang on. Give me a second. Don't they have it right there? Yeah, they do. But uh, Kid Cannabis, that was the name of the movie. Okay. I have heard of that. Okay. Um, okay. So here's the next movie. Greetings, my excellent friend. Do you know when the Mongols ruled China? What do you got? Hey, give me- okay. Bill and Sped's Excellent Adventure. Exactly. There we go. Nice. Good job, my man. Good job. Give me one second here because I got to play this one for you. All right. <laughs> you got one, Bong. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Now, this one might be confusing. Uh, You'll know what it is, but I, I really don't expect you to know, you know, which movie it is because they all sound the same. But here we go. 
What? Hey, give me a drink, man. Come on, man. Give me a drink. With this? Yeah. Oh, go ahead, man. Help yourself. Wait a minute. Hey, man, that's pee. <laughs> no kidding. What are you doing with pee? That's for my probation officer, man. What, does he drink pee? I'm the walrus. <laughs> <laughs> Cheech and Chong up in smoke. No, yeah, that's what I'm saying. They all sound pretty much they the same. Do. <laughs> yeah, the next movie is what it was called. The next movie. Yeah, yep. It was the one after Up in Smoke. Or wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, I think it was after that one. <laughs> <laughs> what does he drink? Pee. <laughs> all right, here we go. This is another big one. You know, you uh, uh, well, you know what I'm trying to say. I'm the walrus. Uh, that's- Fucking bitch. Oh, yeah. I am the walrus. That's ex- Shut the fuck up, Donnie. The I. Lennon. Vladimir Ilyich Ulyanov. What the fuck is he talking about? Hey, man. He- Any idea? Not a one. It was uh, definitely not great at the movie theaters, but definitely did a uh, cult sort of uh, vibe when it came out. That was The Big Lebowski. Okay. Yeah, actually a pretty decent movie. Um, you know, I'm not one that hypes up on it because it's it's definitely weird. Uh, but it's definitely a stoner movie. So here's the next one. Car. You know Wooderson? Oh. How's it going, man? Hey. Pretty good. How's it going with you? Say, man, you got a joint? Uh, no, not on me, man. <laughs> It'd be a lot cooler if you did. <laughs> okay. Uh... <laughs> That's a big one, man. That's a big one. Dazed and confused? Yes. You Is got it, really? it. Yes. All right. Good job. Good job. Yes, that was definitely it, man. And it's uh, for you, my friend. <laughs> Another bong. All right, here we go. Oh, no, thanks. I got some uh, store board right over here in my own. No, man. This is grass. You you mean marijuana? Yeah. Lord have mercy. Is that what that is? Let me see that. Okay. That was from a movie called Grass. (laughs) No, No. but it's the name of a movie that's very close to the name of a rolling paper. Tops? Nope. One more try. Really old movie, 1969. Oh, Easy Rider. Yes. Ah. Very good, good, good. All right, man. Good job. Yes, that uh, that deserves a. You got that one. All right, here we go. Next one. Oh, 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 that we? <laughs> this is either Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back, or it's either Clerks. Nope, it wasn't either one of those. Which one was it? It was a black movie, actually called How High. Yeah, it was actually a really good flick. It had uh, uh, Red Man and a bunch of other stoners in it. I even think Snoop Dogg made an appearance in, it, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, it was a, it was, it was, yeah, just about drugs, man. Yeah, it was pretty fucking cool. Okay, here we go. Next one. That's better. That's more like it. I know you like that. Really well. i just take a puff of that. <laughs> okay. Reefer Madness. Yes. Yeah. You've got it. And for that, you get... Another bong. Ooh, another bong. All right, here we go. This is this is probably the shittiest. You you should probably know this movie, but this is probably the shittiest <laughs> clip from this movie that you could possibly have. Oh. There's other ones that are really really funny, but try okay. this.
<laughs> Any ideas? Like I said, that's the worst possible clip for that's that movie. That's not half baked. Is yes, it? it is. It is half. baked? That is half baked. Very good, sir. Very good. Yes. My f- the favorite scene I would have done was when they were going through the list of the different uh, items that they have, like Billy Bong Thornton, and you know, yeah, <laughs> that shit was crazy because they were just you know coming was, up with some good ones. Yes, yeah, they they had a lot of the Wesley pipes, and <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh damn, these are good. So yeah, Dave Chappelle actually that that's the movie that sort of launched his uh, comedic career. Believe he, it or not, he, he is a funny motherfucker. Oh yes, very much so. All right, next one. That was probably the worst fucking scene from that one, too. I'm just going to take a shot in the dark and say Harold and Kumar. Yes, go to White Castle. Is there. that right? Yes, sir. That was a, that was a guess. Another that bong. Was a guess. Another bong for you, sir. All right, here we go, man. Uh, we only have four more. Let's go in the morning. Hijo de la chingada. Is that a joint, man? <laughs> God damn, it looks like a, a quarter pounder, man. <laughs> That's a blue. Hey, be careful with that shit, man. Uh, yeah. Is it heavy stuff, man? <laughs> Will it blow me away? <laughs> put your seatbelt on, man. I'll tell you that much. Shit. I've been smoking since I was born, man. I could smoke anything, man. It's like, this is up in smoke. That is up in smoke. Very good, very good. That's like eight bong hits now. I think so, yeah, man. You should be pretty fried by now. I'm getting there. All right, here we go. God's vagina. Oh. The name of the What, do you want to bathe in it? I just want to live in here. Yes, you want to be it? Oh, my God. I just want to shove it up my nose and have that smell all day. That's amazing. (laughs) Shove it anywhere you like. Beautiful. What's it called? Pineapple Express. Pineapple Express. Yes, it's this thing like El Nino, this airflow that comes from Hawaii and Canada, and it gets the dirt, mixes it in with the weed in a very special way. It's actually very scientific. I won't go into it right now, but I am the only guy in the whole city that has it. <laughs> Pineapple Express. Yes, you're uh, very good, sir. They did give you that one in there, but that's okay. It's like you're trying to name a song where the name of the song comes up. <laughs> <clears throat> you know, shit happens. <laughs> this happens to be, well, I should, probably shouldn't. Uh, yeah, I won't, I won't precursor it unless you do it. Hold up. My mom's in there. Oh. She about to go to work, though. Got hey, it. I know you don't smoke weed. I know this. But I'm going to get you high today. Because it's Friday, you ain't got no job, and you ain't got shit to do. Anyway, there's an... Okay. Probably one of my all-time favorites. Yeah, it is my all-time favorite. Friday. That's right. That's right. (laughs) When you say this shit smell like... is endo. (laughs) Tastes more like outdo. (laughs) How do you get fired on your day off? (laughs) (laughs) I've been going there 25, 35 minutes. Emergency. JP revealed himself to be an actual robot, and he kidnapped your grandma, and he's going to eat her soul out of her head. My grandmother's in trouble? I'll be right there. <laughs> he's on his way. How much time do we have? Enough time to 69. Oh, just like Don Knotts. Oh, hello, Mayberry. Oh, mm. <coughs> you gotta give me a ride. I'm way too big to drive to the devil's house. <laughs> <laughs> so they let the monkey drive. <laughs> <laughs> I never saw this movie. Oh my god, it I gotta watch really this. Cool. That is fucking cool as shit. That that isn't the other um Harold and Kumar. No. Is it? No. No. Which we should sit down and have a good old thing. No, the name of that movie is Grandma's Boy. In two thousand six is when that came out. I have a feeling I watched that, but I I don't that, remember much an, about that's it. That's Adam Sandler's movie. Grandma's Boy? I think so. Uh, Isn't he in that? No, he's not in there. I mean, I didn't see him there. I mean, he could have. Oh. The one guy that was in there was one of the guys that usually works with Adam Sandler, but uh, I don't know. I didn't see him. But yeah, Grandma's Boy. So yeah. So that's it, man. That's it. That's, oh, really? That is definitely yeah. uh, the best of the best of the best of uh, the rest. <laughs> mm-hmm. So uh, so we have the one more thing, the uh, top 10 most important things in life, yeah, and uh, we can get, get to, to that today. Oh, son of a bitch. 
Which Guys, is, are you serious? Are would we, you look at that? <sighs> that? That's that's like three weeks in a row now. <sighs> it, uh, well, okay. Hey, there's the music. That can only mean one thing is that we have to snuff out this pipe and call it a night. Uh, no, don't snuff out the pipe. We're just going to call it a night anyways. But we do want to say uh, thank you to our producers, um, Bill and Ted. Yeah. And uh, thank you, guys. We appreciate your hard work. It's been and an excellent al- adventure. And we also appreciate our listeners. That would be you listening in now. If you're still with us, by God, you must be high as shit. <laughs> well, anyways, um, Jeff and Dan, we here at the show, we would really like to hear from some listeners. Uh, please... If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, drop us a line at jeffanddan at jeffanddan.com. And, uh, well, we hope to continue here on again next week. Please join us Wednesday, 7 o'clock, jeffanddan.com. Until then, have a good night and a great week.